everybody, this is Glenn Graham, developer at Rastrack.com. We're continuing our series of talking about the web interface for the Rastrack software. Um, today we're going to look at uh, kind of how you can change the display features. Uh, we're going to do that both on the primary website and the mobile app website. So there will be two parts to this. So let's go over to our the what you will see is the big overall display that you see on one of your browsers and stuff that you would log into. You'll see that uh, over here there's two sections. There's a vehicle section and there's a location section. These are primarily vehicles or things that you would have information about. This guy doesn't have much data but this guy shows his current location, last time he speed, number of engine hours, things of that day, nature and his odometer reading. Uh, there's groups in here, like there's rental vehicles, and you'll notice you see that some of them disappeared. Zoom in a little bit. If I go to trucks, some other ones show up. And the same thing, you can do the same thing on your points. This is there's only two points in here, so there's not much chain uh, additional stuff in here. But you can add stuff. You could add a that this is. Uh, this group is called, uh, let's say, call it main. And okay, and we'll call this main. There we go. So the uh, now if I go back, I should have two groups down here. I have the backup group and I have the main group. And same thing with this. Uh, we'll show all the vehicles, but this when you go to settings of this vehicles, you can have groups of this and you can actually have more than one. So if I add truck to this one too, Now they, that one will show up both on the rental and on the truck. Both of them have that little forklift guy on both of them. So anyways, that's basically this area right here. As messaging is primarily you select a vehicle and then you can send it a command. When you send in that command, it would have a response. I can't show that on this because it's a demo uh, site, so those commands won't actually be sent out to a target. But when they get that command, they'll do different things. You can have them send you uh, odometer readings, current location, fuel usage. There's lots of things. Some people use them for, they'll put them on engines that, are, that they want to turn off, like farmers will have. They'll send commands out to their vehicles so they can shut down the emissions so they can uh, keep their fuel usage down. Search is very much like normal search. So if I put in uh, the location of my building here. And there's where I'm at. Now however I can also put in something that's vague like this and I'll get the two locations that are the Google search. This is basically using Google to find the location. And, but once I find the location I want I can click on the here and I can create a location here and that way I can find the location and add it to my list of uh, points. Quickly. Display, we have the ability to show lat and long. This is a kind of a Google feature. And then there's a display of all vehicles. Now you would use this is is you may want to reduce your list over here. So you could make your list smaller, but if I zoom out, you'll see that. Let me zoom out here. All my vehicles are showing up. I am not, not, none of them are not shown on the map, but I only have these two on this side. So it's just a way of, you know, 
controlling what you see. Now if I go in to down here there's some geofences. If I display traffic, this is of course provided through the Google Map interface, but you can see your traffic data. Or I can display my street views and find out where I want to go. Again, this is uh, kind of the uh, comes with a map interface. Uh, on Google had a little trouble updating that guy. There we go. Yeah, nice neighborhood. All right. The other thing is uh, you can select languages. I'm going to come back to that in a second here. But and the last thing is, and I think we uh, talked about, you can add geofences, and these geofences are used for uh, setting up warnings and stuff you can put them around your uh, parking lot and things of that nature. On the languages itself, you can switch this to being a language like, uh, let's switch to Spanish, and you can see that now we're in Spanish, and all of our information is now in Spanish. And that switches on everything, so if I go over the settings area, again, it's a bunch, it's now in the language of Spanish. However, that is not the primary way that you would switch language. We added that in to make it easy for people to go back and forth between two languages. However, what you probably would do, depending on, on your browser, these are in different locations. I'm going to show you what's on Explorer. You go to the Internet Options, and there's a language feature down here. And if I switch that to Spanish, then when I log in, everything is in Spanish right off the bat. So that is a, our preferred approach to uh, controlling what you, which uh, language you would see. But that's what I wanted to show you, and uh, now I'm going to sh demonstrate some of the Hey everybody, this is Glenn Graham continuing with our navigation uh, review of the Rastrack software. Uh, this is a, we're going to look at the iPad and how it's done. Now this is done on an emulator which allows me to capture it much more crisply so I can show you some stuff. However, a lot of the functionality does not work because of the emulator. On your iPad, for instance, when you go to this, you would actually see the vehicles and, and some of the tracks and stuff, which you can see they're not showing up here. But I just wanted to primarily run through the interface with you. You can see there's um, bars up here. Now, this is where you would basically select your vehicle that you need. And so we can select one. Then you would see information about that vehicle would pop up here, and it would give you some options about being able to track of it finding it, going to it, and stuff like that, but we don't see that right now. This bar up here is to expand your view to your maximum view of all your vehicles. And this last one actually is where you would change some of your settings. So you could show the locations and street views and stuff like that. And so those areas are things that you can go and do and change um, and through that demo site and check it out. Uh, I'm now going to show you some of the, these same features but in an iPhone emulator. Hey, Glenn Graham back for our iPhone demonstration. Here's an iPhone emulator. Again, we'll go to the website and you can see these are actually kind of not spaced in correctly. These would actually be a little bit shifted to the right but as you can see it's the same selection criteria same interface so your ipad your iphone and this would be true of the android phone as well you would see the same um, set of uh, information anyways that's all i wanted to show you the rastrack interface stuff